Hello! Welcome to the land of Kak Yak. My name is Laurel. Today is a mid-year eighth grade update. All right, so my oldest is in eighth grade and we have had some changes this year. Things didn't go exactly to plan like with our co-op. So mid-year I pulled him out and so he's just exclusively being homeschooled now and um, I was going to show you so what he is currently using. I'll make some other videos too for my, also for my uh, fourth grader and my first grader because here at the halfway point of the year, there's been some small tweaks. Okay, so for my eighth grader, first, he's still using his unofficial RC notebook to do all his, well, the, major the majority of his work in, right? It's like his core subjects are um, using these pages. And um, so this is still, we're still using this as kind of like our container method and a way to keep him organized. Um, and it's really helpful for his, you know, ADD tendencies. Uh, another organizational tool is his uh, to-do list. Uh, we just printed a bunch of these off. I just made our own little um, notepad of these. But every Monday he fills out his to-do list. So he'll write down, you know, the things that he has to do on his own, he's responsible for himself, or like math, reading, vocabulary, writing, and science. And then he can, you know, keep track of his dates and check things off as he goes. And so this is actually helpful, and he has finally gotten into the routine of doing it without me asking him on Monday morning. So <laughs> that's, it. that's encouraging to me. I'm like, it's working. Like he's fine. You know, he's starting to pick up the mantle of responsibility for himself. So I'll flip it over and I'll give him a clean sheet. looks like this. I will, I'll link to everything I show you in today's video as well. So if anything you want to look at further, look in the description box. Organization and routine are just essential for us to stay on track and um, getting rid of decision fatigue. And um, yeah, I was talking to a mom yesterday and she was like saying she's not like a routine person or whatever. And I'm like, for your own sanity, come up with a routine. <laughs> don't be winging it every day if you don't want to be burned out. All right, so he, uh, my oldest, he just finished up. We started Learn Math Fast. He just finished up volume two. And um, it's actually, we did the book. He went through the book twice. And we kind of went through, he, and then we got to the final test, and he was doing this independently. And he has a habit of, like, he doesn't ask for help. I'm like, why didn't you ask for help? You know, we get to the final test, and you don't pass the final test. Like, you must have not been getting stuff along the way. And he's just like, I didn't think I needed help. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's a good thing we have tests to show us that you do. <laughs> anyway, so then he went through the whole book again, and... He did not pass his test again. So I was like, what do I do? Math has been the bane of my existence with my oldest. Um, it's been our biggest challenge. So I just was like, we've, we've tried multiple different formats. We've tried doing things online. We've tried different curriculums. I think this is like the fourth or fifth math curriculum he's tried. And uh, to be you know fair, like I don't love math myself. So I, f I think I feel I can struggle with feeling inadequate sometimes or just ha not having like a clear plan of like, what do you do when a kid doesn't, isn't getting it? Like, what do you do? Anyway, so I contacted a friend from um, church. I knew that she was a math major in college and that she actually taught math for a while and that she's recently started homeschool. I think this is her first year. She started homeschooling her kids this year. And so I reached out to her and asked her if she like tutored or, you know, uh, I said I need some help here. And um, so, and she said she needed help with language arts for her second grader, which language arts is really like my passion, right? So um, we are going to be, she came over and she sat down with Everett and they, she like literally just went through the book, like just flipped through the pages and she just sat there with them and had him get a piece of paper out and she's like you know try this one try this one she just like has such a good understanding of numbers herself and a, a, 
uh, such a, a good way of explaining it. She actually was encouraging. She said, I actually think it's doing better than you think, but it's a confidence issue. So she's actually going to, we're going to be like swapping. She's going to be coming over like two days a week and we're going to swap. Like I'm going to do language arts with her daughter and she's going to do math with Everett like twice a week. I'm so encouraged by this. Yeah, if if you're having trouble, if you you may need a tutor, like so we just don't, like I'm only one person. I'm only one parent. I can't possibly be strong across all aspects of everything all the time, right? So I am reaching out for help to somebody who is more gifted in the subject than I am. And she was so sweet. She, uh, we called Everett in. We're in the school room. We were just sit sitting at the school table back here. And she just introduced herself. And she, her name is Shelby. And she said, hi, I'm Shelby. And I love math. Numbers are my thing. And let's look at your math book. Like, it was just, just the sweetest um, introduction, just positive, you know. Anyway, so they went through all, they went through a bunch of stuff. They looked at the test that he hadn't passed. And she's like, I think he's ready to take the test again. She's like, have him take it on Monday. And then she's going to come over on Tuesday and see how it went. And if it went okay, then we're going to move him into the next volume three. So that's update on our maths, on our math journey there. Okay, next subject is science. So we do, um, I don't like to do science and history at the same time. I don't like to juggle like, oh, three days a week we do this and two days a week we do that. Like, I don't like that. Um, since we do school year round, I just feel like I have a lot more, more time to play with. And I just do half the year, like six months history, six months science. And if we get done early on one, great. Like then they get a break for a while, right? So we finished the good and the beautiful year three the first half of the year. So now it's science and he is into science in the atomic age by Berean Builders. He does this completely independently. Um, I bought him the lab kit that goes with it. I'll link to all that stuff so you can look at it. And he just, you know, we in the morning we have family Bible time and then he does math and then he does it on his own, you know, and then, um, you know, I give him the answer key, he checks it. And then he does science on his own. So he just gets into his math, his uh, science kit, pulls what he needs, goes usually goes to the kitchen, does it. There's a student workbook. This, this is the one I bought, but I think I could have just printed it off. Um, and the um, comprehension questions are in here. So he answers those in here. Um, but you could just do those in a notebook or something, like a, a normal plain notebook because the questions are in the book. I wanted him to do lab write-ups a certain way. So I used my lab notebook. The pages just look like this, like, right? Experiment title, I've got like stuff for it. It's like three pages for each lab. Um, for him, it just is helpful to have more structure. There's like the final page. So I just printed this out, bound it at home. I think I might put this, I think I might want to put this on Amazon as a pre-printed one because it'd be nice just to be able to buy these and not have to print them and bind them. And you could use them for any, any class with a lab. Anyway, so science is going well. I'm enjoying, he's enjoying it. It's very doable. I do, I am really preferring it over the Apologia courses because they were just too complex. Like there was just too many instructions and um, it was hard even for me to follow. So, uh, and then there was this I bought to help even far farther. It's um, daily lesson plans for science in the atomic age by Lynn Erickson. And I think I, I think I bought this from christianbooks.com. I'll find it. I'll link it for you. But they give like they a little like for chapter one. They give like a, a weekly like what to do every single day for that chapter. Like how you know day. So he's on day 11 that he's been doing this and he'll begin at testing the crazy assumption on page 33 and stop after completing the comprehension check on page 33 to 30 or 36 to 37. So just really simple instructions and he can use this to, you know, he looks at this when he starts his, you know, science for the day. So he knows exactly what he's going to be doing when he's done. He just checks it off. So these, this is super helpful. Okay, so last up is language arts. So our components of language arts are like independent reading, like literature, writing, and uh, vocabulary. And so let's start out with 
our independent reading, our literature. So we have just been, I'm just been, it's easier for me just to have him read from his easy peasy reader. So he's still reading The Spy. Let me see what's up next. He's been reading that one for a while. Oh, Treasure Island is up next. Then The Talisman, The King Will Make a Way. Right, I can use, I don't have to always read. Sometimes I have him look at the RC list and see if, if he'd rather do something different, right? As long as it's from like my pre-approved books is fine. So he can read anything from the easy peasy readers or the RC list as long as we're, and we just keep moving forward. And he likes to have a little bit of that control and say in what he's reading. Um, I know they're all good quality literature. The one thing that's nice about the easy peasy readers is that there are actual like lessons associated with them. I'm not, a, I'm not, I've looked at their corresponding like language arts workbooks for these, like the lower, you know, middle school and elementary school. And they're not my preference, but I do love the readers. <laughs> I really do. And so it'll say like lesson 146. So this would be within um, the talisman. It says read chapter 24. When during a procession of all the crusaders, the Nubian's dog attacks Conrad, the Marquis de Montserrat, revealing him to be the one who stole the king's banner. King Richard challenges him to combat to determine the truth of this accusation, but others persuade Richard to send a substitute to battle in his name. So you actually are getting like a, a summary before he reads this section. Unusual vocabulary, Morian and open helmet, sagacity, wisdom. When you read, the reader can now have little doubt who the Ethiopian slave really was. What did you think? So that would be a question that he would answer in his um, notebook that I have for him on his chapter notes page. Why won't the other crusaders accept King Richard's willingness to defend his own honor and Conrad's challenge? You know, again, that's another one that he would answer in his notebook, get him thinking. Where will the challenge be carried out? He's got to answer that. Right, and then he, and then he had so you read you read these lessons, and they kind of know what they're supposed to be looking for right before they start, and then they read, and then they do the questions, and so I love that this supports reading comprehension, not and and so like they actually gave information, like there was a summary. A lot sometimes um, I've seen them give author information and give just other like uh, helpful uh, background knowledge when before they start the reading. So it actually helps them to understand the lesson that they have segmented for them better than just reading it, you know, on their own without any prepping. So I love that that prep work is built in to these readers and that there's these comprehension questions to follow up and, you know, at like an appropriate um, level of difficulty. So I we, this is what we're using for his independent reading, and I really highly recommend it. And they're, and these are super affordable. Buy them used. They're so affordable. So he would do that. Then for vocabulary, so we are using the Vocabulary Builder Workbook. Right, He's working through here. I've got like instructions for him on a little bookmark. Um, and I have a vocabulary sheet in his, um, in his unofficial RC notebook. And he just does like three words a day and he just does the work on that sheet. Um, these are simple lessons and activities to teach yourself over 1400 must know words. So there's all types of words like, uh, you know, the prefix pre, eponymous parts of speech from antiquity, words from French, compound words and phrases from French, words from German, words with an Italian origin, words from India, traveling words, misleading words, quiet to noisy, like only fools Russian speaking words, just how much, in my opinion, how big is your appetite? I don't know why they're named that. A question of trust. So there's some sort of like, there's a little grouping of words, usually seven words um, in each lesson that are, that they're focusing on. So like this one is religious words, part two. So we have novitiate, a person new to a religious order or any beginner in general, hagiography, syncretic, desecrate, ecclesiastical, priggish, anathema, ecumenical. So those are words, some of those that, you know, you'll actually see in real life. They've got the pronunciation in there. They've got all of the definitions. Uh, the first three have example sentences that they give you. And then there's an activity at the very end that kind of tests if you know them or not. So we work, we take a, it takes a few days for each lesson. It probably takes like three days 
that we study each word list. And he's just working his way through here. He's this far. All right, and then writing. So writing, um, I've got two resources we're currently using and it kind of depends on me. So the primary writing resource we're using right now is Writing and Rhetoric, book six, The Commonplace Essays. And if you are not confident in teaching essay writing and writing, this is just a really, thorough, it's just an open and go curriculum that'll tell you everything you need to know. Have Your book will have all the answers to the discussion questions and stuff. They'll have a sample writings, you know, when they ask them to rewrite a sum write something as a summary or re you know, write a thesis statement, they'll have examples in there for you too. So you can have your kid do theirs. And then we always sit there together. Like, um, I always have ever just grab a chair. He comes actually sits right here on the side of the desk. We get our little books out and we just work for a while together. And it's, these are, um, uh, classical, um, education model. It's very discussion based and that works really well for him. He really needs that person-to-person -person connection and like talking and back and forth. And I love the opportunity to compliment him that when you work together, he does, because he's doing like literally everything independently. This is really the only thing that I am sitting down and doing with him at this point. And so I love the opportunity to point out his strengths or interact with him during the day. Anyways, I think it's a great program. I love it. I did make notes right? And checklists for all of the levels. I was thinking, I am thinking about putting them on the Etsy shop just because I think they're so helpful. <laughs> if you're using this program, he is using, we are using this. We just, um, in his writer, in his notebook, he has a place for essay writing in his RC notebook. But since I'm having him just work in the workbook right now, he just records what lesson he's working in on days that I can't get to this with him. Like some days, I know I've shared with you guys about my migraines and stuff. Like sometimes I just can't, you know, or stuff just comes up. And we usually do this as the very last thing of the day because I like to do it with him and his his younger brothers are done. And so they're out of here. So it's nice to have the room to ourselves where it's quiet. But sometimes I just can't, like I'm not available. So in those days, he's been doing his English, um, the perfect English grammar workbook, simple rules and quizzes to master today's English. And he's just been working his way through this. He's pretty far. He's almost done. He's three-fourths of the way done, I would say, maybe more. And he just does the exercises um, in his, you know, notebook here. And, you know, the answers are in the book so he can check his answers. And this is not something that I really, I just check that he's, like, doing it. But I'm just letting him get what he gets out of it. Um, and then I really only check when he's doing his essays, you know, when, I, when he does his actual writing pieces, that's what I'm looking at his grammar to see if is this translating to proper grammar in his writing. So, so far, I'm, it's all working out. That's my eighth graders halfway mark update. I'll be back with my fourth and first graders videos soon.